folks, I'm back with another one of these outrageous responses to LinkedIn posts. It's your boy David Simpson here again, the criminal justice realm. Yeah, I'm going in. Why am I going in? Because whenever I get on LinkedIn and I start reading stuff, anything pertaining to the criminal justice system or, or the criminal legal system, you know, I you know, I just start getting headaches <laughs> because you know a lot of people are crying out about stuff and are hurting seriously hurting about what's going on in this country but the epidemic is not properly being addressed the crisis of the prison system is not being addressed and that is because it's only few people only a few of us who really want it addressed. The majority is really just like, yeah, this shit makes us look bad. Can you do something to make it look like, you know, to make it look like we're not looking that bad, you know? Can you do something to, you know, make people think that we're actually the good guys, that we actually want to do something right? Right? That's, that's the behavior, that's the mentality, right? Why do you think that they only run to fix something when it's exposed? And even then sometimes they drag their feet because they know the majority of society really doesn't care. They understand that the majority of society just doesn't want to look bad, <laughs> just like they do, right? It's a programming. It's a program. Pay attention. I keep, I'm pointing this out. I'm going to keep rehashing it and rehashing it for you guys all the time. Because all the things that you think are problems, they are not problems. The real problem is the programming of the folks in the United States of America. You are programmed to enslave and dehumanize and take advantage and make money and survive and everything else off of your peers who fall into some form of a marginalized community. Yes, I said it. <laughs> did he really just say that? Yes, I did. Because it's the truth. Let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. It gives me a headache every time I see stuff like so. My, my uh, LinkedIn buddy here Talia Talia uh, you know I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly I'm from the islands I'm not I'm not educated <laughs> I know I'm really not I didn't go I was in Colombia for a little bit right and this philosophy for a little bit I did all right with it. <laughs> I did all right with it because just like I have problems with reading this stuff I had problems with 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 stuff with point of views on justice, what's justice and who's getting justice and all that stuff too, while being educated at Columbia for a little bit, it was just a little stint, so about a year or two, if that, you know, four semesters maybe, philosophy, right? I didn't do much. That's it. Other than that, I'm an electrician, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I know. I know how to do electrical work really well. This other stuff, uh, I'm not, you know, I can't be that smart because there are too many, you know, people are way more educated than me who are not saying the things that I'm saying, who are not trying to do the things that I'm trying to do, you know, and so I, I don't know what that really means, but I'm gonna, let's, let's get to this issue that Talia is having here. My friend Talia here, she has this post, right, Talia says, she has this post this from this article, it says, rape, torture case man gets bail after tracking down alleged victim right um so a worker tracked down apparently a 16 year old i tried to you know get a little touch on it before because the case is hard to go to the article is hard to get to right and some man you know abused 
uh, a teenager, tracked her down and abused her and they let him back out on the street and uh, where he could attack Talia or other 16 year olds, other um, you know, kids are in danger uh, from this guy who is accused of doing this, this work. And so Talia has issue with that, even though Talia is um, an advocate for justice reform, um, Talia has an issue with that. What is, you know, right? As you can see, Talia is saying, you know, this is exactly what is wrong with our system, right? I kind of like browse through this a little bit at first. And so, Talia's cry or complaint is, is that there are a lot of women who are, who have mental health issues, um, and or other behavioral issues um, that end up in the prison system and uh, housed there for a long extensive period of time and this man who is a danger and or a threat to society you know he gets out on bail and he's free to go about his business and, and I would agree with Talia that is a problem that is a serious problem. But what is the problem? Is the problem the system, like Ta Ta Talia is, is, is asking? Is the problem the system? Or is the problem something else? And I could help Talia understand this, you know, with my limited education. <laughs> my limited education, I could help Talia understand this. I believe that I can. Right? I believe that I could help her understand why this man got out of prison and he's a threat to an actual human being and the women are in prison who committed infractions and all have mental health issues they're just acting out behavioral issues right why are they in prison and why is he not well Talia the simple truth is, is that your criminal justice system is not a criminal justice system, it's a criminal legal system. Because it is not actually fair and just as it promotes itself to be. It probably never was and probably never will be because the folks here in the United States of America are wired mentally to lie, cheat, and steal, put money, fame, career, promotions, and all of that stuff over marginalized human beings. And they are only wired to protect one or two of the few that they believe is worthy of protection. Maybe because that person knows somebody, person is connected somewhere. That person is from a privileged community. That's, you know, those are the people who fear well in this system. And so it's no surprise to me, absolutely zero surprise to me that these folks, these women that Talia is complaining about, that's in this system, that's overcrowded in the system, is there. Because they are marginalized. They come from marginalized communities. They have mental issues. They have behavioral issues. They don't know how to act. They don't want to get a job. They want to do this. They want to do that. You know, and society, from the time that's your behavior, society the majority of folks in society think that, well, you know what? You belong in our prison system, by which you become a slave, and where we can keep you away from the community for extensive periods of time, so that others who manage the system and who invest in the system can benefit. And the rest of us will feel safe 
knowing that your problem problematic self is now labeled slaved appropriately and locked away and kept away from our society like what i said i promise you there are in the hundreds of thousands right there's 300 there's over about 370,000 people in the united states of america i believe 200,000 people believed in what i just said they think exactly like that how do i know this because i spent the majority of time with them in prison where do you guys think people in prison come from <laughs> do they fall out of the sky or do they come do they dig them out of the sea or from some no they come from the communities <laughs> it's, 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 you're locking one another up you're imprisoning one another they come from the communities and I've sat and I've communicated with thousands of people intellectual conversations and I get and I understand their thoughts and their thinking and they all believe that you should lock that guy up. Well, that guy, he belongs here. Not me, <laughs> but he does. You know, it's, it's a programming. Everybody, we're all messed up. That programming got us and got us good. Think about it. As soon as somebody does something you don't like, what do you say? Show that in prison. And what does that mean here in the United States of America? Make them slaves. Right? So the woman got no behavior, they got issues, they suffering, they belong here. Now the guy, you know, obviously he's, if he's done, if there's substantial evidence, you know, at hand to show that this guy has done what he's done and he's a danger to the community and they let him back out, Ah, I feel your pain. I really do. Maybe they let him back out because he's privileged. He knows somebody. He has connections. That could be the reason. Because the people who run your system work with and or go easy on those who they choose. And the rest of us are just slaves to be dealt with accordingly. That's why the women are treated this way and this man probably has some, he probably knows someone or is from a privileged community or something like that. The other truth could be that, and I haven't read the story so don't hold it against me, I didn't get to, go to his story. I'm just rambling here. But the other truth could be that there's not enough substantial evidence to prove that he actually did the crime against the young lady. It could be someone else. Maybe the folks dealing with the system is trying to do something right for once and not put away another innocent man for decades for it to only be overturned to find out that it wasn't him and it was someone else. That is a real thing. So with that said, the guy is out on bail, I understand. We're in between a rock and a hard place, but it's one that is necessary. How many men are we gonna incarcerate for decades for wrong, and, and, and wrongfully incarcerate for decades or falsely incarcerate for decades until we get they finally get things overturned? right so that's that's a horrible thing that needs to stop talia you are a advocate so i know you would get and you would understand that at the same time i get your point and i get it and i understand if they believe that this guy is a danger to this young individual a threat I would say the solution should be to make sure the individual cannot access the uh, victim but should that person now be 
enslaved and treated like a slave and exposed to murder, rape, diseases, and all the horrible things that come with being incarcerated in prison in the United States of America, and you're not 100% sure it's him, you are not, he was not found guilty, you know, you gotta dabble with these questions. I feel a pain, but should we be doing that to this guy? No, maybe out of town. Look, we caught you, or I believe that, I believe that if there is substantial evidence that is at hand, especially like a video uh, capturing the incident going down, that a person should be removed uh, from the community that uh, to reduce the harm of folks, period. If you got something, if you know something, for sure, yes, I'm, I'm done with that. But if you're not sure, if there's doubt that it's that individual, but somebody has to be protected. Because if you're wrong on that decision, that person could be harmed or killed. I say remove the person, but don't enslave them in your prison system. That could possibly kill them. And, and, and let the, you know, and go through a quick, extensive process of identifying on whether this is the actual individual or not and solve that issue. I say move them out of state, move them miles away, relocate the person, you know, put them on the other side of the state, something, do something else, right? There are things that we could do, but we only get there if we start thinking, if we start reversing our thinking, our mentality, if we start curing ourselves of the, the want and the need to dehumanize and incarcerate, enslave, um, you know, folks with mental illness and, and or behavioral issues, marginalized communities. That's the only time that that would stop. All right? So, Talia, I get it. It's a, hard, it's a, hard, it's a tough place to be. Um, I hope that that's, I know it doesn't do much, but I hope you could work with that and, and get to a better place. David Simpson, Criminal Justice Realm. See you.